Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to design post-tension concrete slabs and RAM concept that were created using a manual tendon workflow. For this video, we are going to be focusing on reviewing the design status and the rest of the pertinent results related to post-tension design. At this point in our workflow, we've already performed a calculation on the model and we've reviewed our tendon geometry and made any adjustments necessary. We're now at the point where we're ready to review the design status to see if our post-tensioning design is acceptable or within the code limits. To review your design status, we're going to go to our Layers menu bar item and then select the Design Status option. And you can see we have several different options available here. To get an overall status on the design, we're just going to simply select Status Plan here. Now in concrete design, it is possible for a concrete member to fail or exceed code limitations regardless of the amount of reinforcement provided. For example, if the shear demand on a concrete member exceeds the code allowed shear capacity, RAM concept will report a code violation. Now we can see here anything that's acceptable will appear in green font and anything that is a violation will appear in red. If you would like to increase your font size, we can just click on the enlarge fonts icon and we can see that we do have a couple of failures here and this is referencing the ACI code section 18.3.3. So we know already that we do need to make some adjustments to our post tensioning design and it's mainly occurring along this line and along this line as well. Let's go ahead and review the longitudinal tendon plan in order to make some changes. To access that layer, if you don't already have it open, you can go to your layers plan, select the longitude pre-stressing, and again, we're focusing mainly on the longitude manual tendon standard plan for today's exercises. Now, after you perform the calculation, you can modify your tendon layout, including your profile points and your number of strands, and then re-perform the calculation to see if you are now within your code limits. We're going to go ahead and modify the number of strands along grid lines 3 and 7. To select these items, we're going to hold down our shift key and draw a fence around grid line 3 and grid line 7. Now what you might have noticed is we do have jacks located on this plan. So we want to ensure that we don't modify the jack plan and actually jacks and tendons can't be modified in the same time. So over in our layer specific toolbar we can control our selection using the filter current selection by object type icon. It's basically a filtering ability and we can choose which objects we currently want to select and we're going to select just our tendons along those lines. Once we're done, we're going to click OK. We're going to right click and say Selection Properties. And here we can adjust the number of strands. Now this is a trial and error approach using either the manual or generated tendon workflows. So we're going to go ahead and make a change. We'll increase our number of strands to 16. Click OK. And then we'll re-perform our calculation to see how we did. Up in our standard toolbar, again, we're going to click on our Calc All icon to perform the calculation. Now we're still getting analysis warning that one span is different. The properties are different in some design spans versus in adjacent design spans. And we've already established that that's an acceptable warning and our properties were specified intentionally. So we can go ahead and bypass that warning. Now after we're done, we're going to again go back to our design status plan and review how we did. Now at this point, everything has come up green and has shown that it's acceptable. And you're going to get a status for every punching check and every design strip that was included in that calculation. Now at this point, we're ready to review some additional results that might be pertinent to post-tension slab design. The next set of results we're going to review is the balance load percentages. Now post-tensioning tendons and anchors apply internal loads to the concrete structure, which can cause deflection reversals that may crack the slab. A tendon layout can be adjusted to reduce, to reduce the amount of uplift or balance load. 
To review your balance load percentages, you're going to do that do, using your design spans plan. We're going to start with the longitude direction. So we'll go to our layers menu bar item, select design strips, and then go to the longitude design spans plan. To review the amount of balanced loading percentages that you have, you're going to want to turn that option on using your visible objects icon. Here we can go ahead and select this checkbox right here for balanced load percentages. Once it's selected, we can click OK. And then again, we can increase our font size to review the amount that we have. Now in the longitude direction, most of the design spans are showing a balance load percentage greater than 100% for the design spans along grid lines 3 and 7 between grid lines A and C. Now if we would like to adjust the balance loads for a manual tendon workflow, we do have a tool that will be able to help you calculate the appropriate profile. Let's go ahead and take a look at that in the longitude pre-stressing plan. Now we already have the longitude manual longitude tendon standard plan open. So we can just click it through the tabbed window here, or again, you can use your layers menu to access that information. Now what we're going to do is we're going to select a certain tendon. We're going to go along grid line three between grid lines C and D. We're going to go ahead and select this tendon here. And then we're going to click a calc profile to tool, which is going to automatically calculate the appropriate profile point for a certain area based on a desired balance load. Now what we're going to see is we're going to see the current balance load for this span is negative 3.407 kips per foot. We're going to go ahead and click cancel now. Now to achieve a balance load in the adjacent span, we're looking to achieve the same exact amount of desired balance load. So let's go ahead and click the adjacent span and then again select our calc profile tool. Now our current balance load here is negative 3.544 but we go like to go ahead and get a better balance load. We're going to enter it at negative 3.407 and then click calculate and then if we took a closer look, we can see that the profile point has automatically adjusted. And you can use this tool in either the latitude or longitude direction in order to adjust your balance load percentages. If you make any changes to your plan, including your profile points, you are going to want to reperform a calculation and regenerate your finite element mesh to review your additional results. Now the next set of results we're going to review are our pre-compression plans. The pre-compression plans can be useful for viewing the level of tendon pre-stress and the effect of restraining supports. To view the pre-compression plans, you're going to go to your layers menu bar item and then select loadings followed by balanced loading and then you can find an FX and an FY pre-compression plan. Within this plan, again, we can increase our font size to get the numerical values. Now to comply with the ACI 318, section 18.12.4, we will review our pre-compression plans to ensure that we have provided a minimum average effective pre-compression of 125 PSI. We're going to do this for both the X direction and, of course, the Y direction. In addition to the pre-compression plans, you can also review your hyperstatic reactions. Now the hyperstatic loading is a theoretical loading that considers the restraining effect of supports on this structure as it tries to deform due to the application of post-tensioning. To review these plans, we're going to go to our layers menu bar item, select loadings followed by hyperstatic loading, and then we're going to go to our standard reaction plan. Now RAM concept will automatically calculate the effects of the hyperstatic loading on all objects according to the formula of FH equals FB minus FP. That's basically the hyperstatic forces and moments will equal the balanced loading forces and moments 
minus the primary forces and moments in the object. The last piece of information that you may want to review are the tendon force plans. To review the tendon forces, you're going to go up to your layers menu bar item and select either latitude or longitude pre-stressing and go to your manual tendon plans. To review your tendon forces, we can click on our visible objects icon and then select tendon forces. Now RAM concept can calculate the force losses in a tendon if jacks are modeled at the live or stressing ends. RAM concept performs friction loss calculations considering the curvature of the tendons, the horizontal kinks of the tendons, and the jacking and friction parameters. The stress in the tendon is assumed to vary linearly along each tendon segment. Now, as we can see in the latitude direction, we don't have any jacks present. If we were to try to take a look at this in the longitude direction, we would maybe get slightly different results. Now this completes our process for designing post-tensioned concrete slabs in RAM concept using a manual tendon workflow. Again, you may find that a manual tendon and a generated tendon might be two workflows you might want to combine together. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.